What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel. For today's video we'll be going over a unique radio or radio system I should say and that's going to be this lower radio system from Redivis that includes a repeater and two handhelds that operate in the 70 centimeter ham radio band. So join me and let's check it out. Before we get into it, Fredivis sent me these radios for this review, but as always, I'll be giving my honest opinions on them. As mentioned in the intro, this is a unique radio system as it's a digital voice radio system that uses LoRa, which stands for long range, which is what Meshtastic uses to be able to reach such long ranges with such low power equipment. Similar to Meshtastic, these radios can also create a mesh network and rebroadcast signals to give increased range for up to 30 radios according to their website. Redivis sent me their option with the RB91 digital repeater and two RB24 handhelds. These aren't enough radios to test the mesh network functionality and they were unable to send us another set of radios to test this with and it was too cost prohibitive for us to purchase more for testing so we'll have to take them at their word. Based on some testing we'll get into later, I do believe this will work though. So let's get into the devices themselves, starting with the handhelds. These don't have any sort of IP rating on them, so no playing in the rain with these, unfortunately. These radios also don't have a screen and just have a speaker and mic on the front. Then on the side, we have a PTT button as well as two buttons on the side. The top additional button tells you what channel you're on and the other is a battery status and these are not programmable. Then on top we have a removable SMA antenna, a channel knob for selecting one of the 16 channels, and a power and volume knob, and on the other side we have the standard Kenwood K1 speaker and mic jack. As far as power output, their website claims 5 watts. So that's the handheld, let's take a look at the repeater. The repeater has a lot of the same controls as the handheld units, a speaker and a mic, which means the repeater can actually be used to communicate as well. And like the handhelds, there's a knob for power and volume, a knob for channel selection, a PTT button, and a button that gives you the current selected channel and one that gives you the current battery level. Speaking of battery level, the repeater has an internal 15,000 milliamp hour battery. Now as far as powering and charging go, this can either be plugged into a wall or it also has the option of connecting a solar panel to it. Then finally we have an SO239 connector for an external antenna and power output for the repeater is also listed as 5 watts. Now as far as channels go, it comes pre-programmed with the following frequencies on the available 16 channels shown on the software here. And these are on the lower portion of the 70 centimeter amateur radio band. Now there is software available for it that you can see here that will allow you to program frequencies within 400 to 470 megahertz. Now this has some frequencies outside of the ham bands that you could maybe use if you have a uh, licensed frequency for business. These do have a pretty wide bandwidth at 250 kilohertz however and I'm not familiar with the FCC regulations on the business side of things so I can't speak on if that'll be a potential issue for business use or not. So since these are LoRa radios, which again stands for long range, will they outperform other digital radios? To test this out, I hooked up the repeater unit to a tri-band antenna that I have on my roof and drove to various spots with increasing distance with one of the handheld radios to see how far I could get before I was no longer able to receive a signal at the repeater unit. For an antenna while mobile, I had the handheld hooked up to a tri-band antenna I have on my vehicle. I was able to reach a food city about four miles away before the signal started to get robotic and difficult to copy. To compare, I removed the antenna from the lower repeater unit and plugged it into my ICOM 9700 and set that to D-Star mode on a frequency of 434 megahertz, which is what the default channel 6 is on the lower radios, which is what I used for the test. 
For the handheld, I used my Kenwood D75 on D-Star mode, and this is also a 5 watt radio, and I hooked that up to the same antenna in my vehicle. So I drove to the same food city I was at where the signal started to get robotic on the lower radio. And as you can see, the signal is much better between the Kenwood and the ICOM. Passing through the city. Passing through the city. I will admit, however, this may not be the most fair comparison as I'm sure the receiver on the ICOM is much better than the lower repeater unit but this was the best test I could run with what I currently have. I mainly wanted to check if there were any significant distance benefits to the lower protocol usage with these radios, but I believe they're using shorter range lower settings to allow for voice communication. They provided me with the spreading factor and the bandwidth settings, but not the code rate. So they're using a spreading factor of seven and 250 kilohertz of bandwidth. Since many of you may be familiar with Meshtastic, if we compare this to their modem preset chart, we can see the settings at or near a spreading factor of 7 and bandwidth of 250 kilohertz are going to be the fastest but shorter range. If you'd like to learn more about LoRa, we've done a video where we take a deep dive into the various LoRa settings, and while this video was made for Meshtastic in mind, the same LoRa principles apply to these radios we're reviewing today. I'll link to that video in the video description below if you're interested. Now back to these radios and let's discuss something I found very interesting. The RB91, which is the repeater unit, is, well, a repeater. But it's a simplex repeater, which means it operates on a single frequency. A traditional repeater is duplex, which means it operates on two frequencies. One frequency for the repeater input that will receive signals from the people using the repeater and another frequency for the repeater output, where the people using the repeater will receive the signals. This allows users to talk to each other in real time without delay. Simplex repeaters, on the other hand, are not real time, operate on a single frequency, and are usually a bit annoying because of how they work. You make your transmission and the repeater records it while receiving it, and then it'll transmit the recording once it stops receiving your transmission. So that means that the transmitting station has to listen to themselves each time, which can be rather annoying. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. We were expecting the same type of simplex repeater operation out of these radios, but much to our surprise, the simplex repeater operation was in real time. There is a very slight delay, but this is similar to what you'll see with other digital radios, so I believe this is unrelated to the repeater operation. We initially thought that the repeater function maybe wasn't working because we weren't hearing ourselves, but we tested it by going far enough away to where we would only be able to hear each other via the repeater, and sure enough, it was repeating the signal in real time. How this was working didn't become apparent until testing the radio's spurious emissions. After hooking up the radio to the TinySA and performing the tests, the readings were a bit jumpy with the signal levels jumping up and down making it hard to perform the test. I wasn't sure what was going on and thought maybe something was wrong with the radio itself, but this prompted me to view the signal on the radio with a waterfall. Looking at the signal here, we can see that it's not constantly transmitting and there's a short break between each transmission. It may be a bit harder to see on the radio, so let's have a look on a computer with SDR Sharp where we can slow down the waterfall display a bit and see it easier. So here we can see the breaks a bit better. I believe these breaks in the transmissions allow for the receiving and repeating of the data, allowing for this real-time simplex repeater capability. This is just speculation, however, but let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. As far as the spurious emissions test, the TinySA couldn't get accurate readings due to the nature of the transmission and how it isn't constantly transmitting a signal. So I'm unable to do any actual testing to say yes or no as far as the spurious emissions go. Overall, I think it's a pretty cool system, especially with it being a real-time simplex repeater, and that's something I don't believe currently exists on the market. In addition to that, if you're looking for some privacy while staying within the FCC regulations, this is the only LoRa radio system I'm aware of, and someone would have to have another one of these to listen into your communications, and with it being channel-based, you could program a different frequency instead of the default 16 to make it even more difficult. 
If you're interested in this radio system, I'll leave an affiliate link in the video description below to check it out. That'll do it for this video on this LoRa radio and repeater system from Redivis, and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already so you won't miss out on any upcoming videos. Thank you all and have a good one.